Welcome. Oh, what a day. Nice to see everybody's smiling faces here today. Lachlan Cross joins us from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, host of the Locker Room, 95.7 Cruise FM in Edmonton, radio station, where they play the hits. <laughs> oh, sorry, I got on mute. I didn't know. What's oh, that? Sorry. You play the hits. We play it. Play, play the, the hits s- on the radio. Hey. The platter's the batter. Spin in the platter's the batter. Yep, we're dipping the tune spoon into the ballad salad. Here's Gowan, everybody. <laughs> Gowan. Criminal <laughs> mind. He should be Criminal in jail mind. for this one. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. I hope you got your sunglasses during the day because you're going to need them at night. Here's Corey Hart. <laughs> Corey Hart. Sunglasses. Oh, my bank. Corey Hart. God, I uh, anyway, welcome. do shit like that. Yeah, we all did. Uh, that is Lock and Cross, and that is my friend James DeFiore from BlackballMedia.ca, also Blackball the Podcast. Um, and uh, you can get him at James DeFiore on Twitter, at Lock and Cross on Twitter. Hi, everybody. How are we? we got a fucking busy day today. Mm-hmm. Lots going on. But I do want to start uh, not with the heavy shit today. Usually we lead with the, we lead with the fucking hammer. We're not leading with the hammer today. We're going to lead with some radio, everybody. Do a little radio. Okay, I don't do that. Yeah, you do. I totally do, do. not I'm gonna play it. do that. James, so listen in closely. Tune, we'll find out in a moment, Lachlan. Honk, honk. <laughs> That's what I need. Everybody awake. Hey, everybody. Honk, honk. Everybody, good bolded. It's not good morning. It's spelled with a B if you're in radio. Good bolded, everybody. Good bolded. Um, so Lachlan was kind enough. He's got a contest uh, that he's running on 95.7 Cruise oh. FM in Edmonton. Uh, it's called the Den of Sadness Sound of the Day. Uh, the Den of Sadness is uh, the the uh, your 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 little person co-host. His name's James P. White. He's in the background there watching television on the floor because his legs don't get to the floor when he sits on the couch. That's literally why he watches on the floor. There he is. Um, and uh, and the sound of the day was played today. We gave away a prize. But yesterday we made fun of fucking radio and radio contests till the fucking cows came home. And I got to be very why- careful because we break a lot of these rules. We, <laughs> I will be making fun of something one week and then my boss will put that on the air the next. So, <laughs> yeah, that's called Schadenfreude. He's doing it to you on fucking purpose. I would do the so, same if I was your boss too, just to watch yeah, your head. So explode. I always, I always tread lightly into these waters when we just start making fun of radio. So there's lots of reasons why I don't like doing radio, and, and I'm sure at some point in time, and in fact, I know that I will be doing radio again, but but this is the thing I will never do again. And you're doing it, but you're mocking it, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> the best part about it is one of our competing radio stations in town launched their Sound of the Day contest today. <laughs> and I I am very good friends with one of the guys that has to do this, and I know he is dying slowly each and every, every time day, you do it, yeah. Every time he has to execute this contest, I know he's dying a little inside. <laughs> I loved it. You sent it to him this morning after you did it, and I didn't get a chance to listen live, but I was going to. You sent it to me. It was like eight thirty in the morning. I pissed my fucking pants laughing at it because it is absolute mockery of radio contests. And I'll let me. I'll tell you why I hate them in a second. But I got to tell you. As a radio guy, as someone who appreciates great radio, as someone who may have achieved yeah. things in radio no one else has, me, 
I loved it because it was everything that I love doing, which is taking a giant shit on the establishment. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's two minutes you don't want to miss. This is Lachlan's radio contest, which he has no approval for. He's just doing this on his own, which is why I fucking love the man. Because he's giving away Trump University CDs as grand prizes for it. Just shit they got lying around. Anyway, here's how it's, the whole contest it's works. It's, and that it's, I can't make up. It's I like how difficult stuff. the questions are. That's what I like. <laughs> here's the contest. Emily, this is fucking awesome. Here you go. One oh, oh that's the, the intro. intro again. Yeah, <laughs> that would be hilarious, though. <laughs> there you go. That's the contest, the yeah, whole intro. That's it. Brilliant. Done. 30. <laughs> Uh, uh, sorry, I'm here glad it is. I'm drunk for this. Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> here you go, everybody. This is the best. Welcome to the locker room. Den of sadness. Secret, Secret sound, sound of the, of the day. day. Here's Lachlan Cross, Grant Johnson, and James P. White with your secret sound of the day. And so it begins. All these sounds recorded from James P. White's Den of Sadness. Here is the first sound. <laughs> What's the prize, Jimmy? It's building a fortune in business from Trump University. Four CD ROMs, 11 C- audio you CDs, can't even and make a this DVD. Whole lines are open. James Peter White's proof that that works. <laughs> you have to wait. You have to wait for the winner, and you have to wait for how many callers they took. It's pure been- mockery. Hang on. He's not done. Just oh, listen. sorry. Sorry. That's sorry. okay. We'll take caller 957. (laughs) Do you know the locker room? Den of sadness. (laughs) Secret sound of the day. Call now. 780-989-0957. To win something from the den of sadness. (laughs) All right. I'm ready. Let's do this. The locker room. Den of sadness. Secret sound of the day. On 95.7 Cruise Out. Just so you guys know, this is how void radio is. These guys do the very best job of it. There's been so far a minute of content. Only 15 seconds has been talking. The rest is imaging. That's it. It's fucking unbelievable. I thought it was a monster truck ad for a second. It is. Good morning, Cruz. What's your name? Sherry. Sherry, you're caller 950. Well, actually, you're caller number one, but I didn't want to count to 957. Thank you for not putting me through that pain. Sherry. Yes. What was the sound? It was a toilet flushing. Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Woo! You're our first big winner! <laughs> <laughs> I looped her laugh. No shit. Yeah. No. Either that or she's having a stroke. You back right? Woo! Woo-hoo! Oh, locker room! There is no content in there at all. It is two minutes of pure mockery of the business. And I can't tell you. Look at my eyes. I'm crying. I'm crying because it's like everything I would do. I think we met for a reason, Dean. I would have loved to be the first caller. I really would have. I can't tell you how many people this? are trying to win this. I like literally. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I've right talked to a hundred people in the last week about how excited they are to win something that smells like Jimmy's apartment. <laughs> Cause it all has that sort of tinge. That yeah. Chalky kind of. <laughs> yeah. Smell I know. of somebody who doesn't necessarily wash. It smells like outhouse. Clean effectively. Yeah. It's that pungent outhouse smell that you get when you're walking <sighs> to. Group homes. Anyway, I, I just wanted to tell you, like, I'm no radio maven. In fact, a lot of people called me washed up today on Twitter. <laughs> but as a washed up radio cat, fuck you that made me. It? Oh, so much. You know, it, 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 I'm I'm driving around the other day and I'm listening to those radio stations. Like, and I won't, it doesn't have to say which one it is. Kiss, but they were <laughs> they were they were going. We're going to give you a 500 bucks an hour every hour for the next two months until ratings are done. And I'm like, that's one way to do it. Right? <laughs> well, or, or, or you can do, you can listen to part. something that makes me laugh my dick off and get you listeners. And that's what Lachlan's doing. So ah, congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate You know, uh, that means a lot, Dean, because I know I was a big fan of yours for a lot of years. So I know yeah. what you brought to the table. 
Um, so the fact that you appreciate our stupidity is is uh, that's not is stupid. Very rewarding. Thank you. No, no. You know where that comes from? A place of hatred. I can't, <laughs> and I fucking love it. It's comedy writing, though. That's what I like about it. Like it's like SNL style yeah. writing. It really is. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but you know what? You know what? Uh, here's the thing: is it, and this is what a lot of people don't understand: is that guys like Lachlan traditionally don't last in the business because they get <laughs> mad. They get angry when they can't get what they want, and then they start yelling at people. Lachlan doesn't do that. You know what Lachlan did with Cruz? Well, he might do that, but here, he to me, he didn't, and that's the story I'm going with today. What he did was, he's like, <laughs> I don't well have anything for, for, I got nothing for a promo. I got nothing going on, so why don't we just give shit out of Jimmy's apartment, and we'll mock the entire world of radio contests for the next two months while everybody else is going broke. Well, and he just he he beggars can't be choosers. So he just looked for the opportunity and went with it and fucking good for you. One of the yeah. things that we do in this business now, because all these companies own multiple properties, yeah, is they take their radio station, right? The mm -hmm. one that's doing the worst and they throw a whole bunch of money at it. Yeah. And then they hope that that the money actually brings people in and then. When it fails, they flip the format. <laughs> and the this is all true, by the way. The only thing and that makes the cut is Gowan. <laughs> Every and then format. The one that's making them all the money doesn't get any money. No, because, because they're like, no, you're doing like, fine by yourself. On. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're you're okay. And mm -hmm. ultimately in the end, it it probably saves a lot of formats. Like Yeah, it does. It does because Nobody tunes. This is something that a lot of people have have neglected to realize over the years of of programming radio stations. Nobody listens to radio for all of these things that we find important in radio as radio people. They tune into radio stations that have good content, right? right. And that comes in a lot of different formats, and some. Some people are able to do it, and some people are not able to. Well, do it. I would say the radio stations where they have to bribe you with five hundred dollars an hour every single hour is a radio station that doesn't have a lot of content. So they have to say, "Listen, yeah. it, to me." And this is what it always was: we'd get into like a ratings contest. I'm like, "Fuck, seriously, we knock ourselves out for like ten months of the year, and you want to yeah. take two months off to bribe people?" Like that's yeah. not how we got there. That's not how we got to this place, right? And so and so now when I when I hear these radio contests, I know why they're having them is because other than you, maybe a handful of other radio stations, it's not just I've radio stations. I've done these like, contests just so you know. Oh, I know you have. Yeah. We all have. We've yeah. all had to do it, right? Right, right. Yeah. But it's just it, yeah. no, and you're not missing much. No, Hi, I, everybody. I, I have a, it. Let's I take have a, let's take a two month break from everything that we've done. Let's take a two month break. Okay, great. This is what program is here. Let's take a two month break. Okay, great. You know that job we're paying you to do, and we've, we're begging you to do, and begging you to get listeners. Well, you're not doing it, so we're going to have to start bribing people with five hundred dollars an hour for twelve hours a day. And they're like, "That sounds great." Then all the content that they were going to do to be able to fucking get paid and, and get ratings is out the door. And all of a sudden, all they're doing is just giving away money, saying, "Oh, did you hear these guys are giving away five hundred bucks during the pandemic? It's a great idea." Lachlan's not doing that. You know what they're doing? They're giving away stuff that Jimmy's probably going to throw out in two months when spring cleaning comes around. I don't know. Jimmy like doesn't that. throw shit out. We're oh, actually doing okay. him a favor. We're actually cleaning his apartment out. <laughs> and if and if, La <laughs> if Lachlan was doing a, a five hundred dollar contest, he would yeah. just announce that he was doing it just for the ratings. Do you, do you want to help us boost our ratings? You know, like I have and, done and I have said things like that, and I've gotten into a lot of trouble for it. Oh, right. uh, we got a comment not? from Christy. She says, My husband was trying to make me listen to now this morning. Is that a radio station in your market that's giving away money for the sound yeah. now? Is that it? Uh, I don't know if they have a sound in the even day. Know. Uh, now, this morning to win money and then said, Nope, a, had to listen to the lock. Look at that. See, fucking someone's like, you. I don't need that money. I'd rather be entertained. Um, there is a uh, there are there's some really good talent in this market. We're we're up against it in Edmonton, if I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, and now radio has uh, has some great programming. I mean, I it's not for me. It's it's definitely not directed at a, a cynical fifty year old alcoholic. But um, I know people that listen to it. Yeah, and I I I don't are they boring as fuck? 
Yeah, probably boring as fuck. I don't even know what now is, but you know what it just says to me? When someone says our radio station is called now, it's like, we no names. We just shot in the dark. We're going to give it a bowl here. See what happens. And call it they now. have the morning show is Crash and Mars. No idea who they are. Yeah, Crash and Mars. They're very good talent. Hmm. Okay. That's really? super. <laughs> Well, that's crazy because I've never heard of them once in my entire life. I thought it was years. a department store when you first said it. Yeah. You know what? I thought it was a fucking video game. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gamer gun. <laughs> they got huge. They got they got big numbers. All right. Yeah. So. I don't care. Still haven't heard of them. I'd listen to you any day of the week. <laughs> Fuck giving away money. Anyway, uh, nice to see everybody. And we've we've had a busy couple of days. Back to school. Did you guys have, did you take a bunch of back to school calls today? I know Alberta's in a bit of a different tizzy. Uh, but it, it was back to school for a lot of kids in Ontario today. And and I flipped this really like totally normal, totally easygoing tweet about how to prepare your kids for back to school. And I want to bring it up. FYI, kids are going back to school. Make sure you ask your teacher if they're vaccinated as soon as you walk into class. If they say <laughs> they say don't say if they don't say yes proudly Walk the F out of that class and demand a vaccinated teacher. You're in charge of the plan and the school has no choice. Now, here's the thing. We're all going back to school with uh, like zero vaccination policy. Teachers don't have to disclose it. Students don't have to disclose it, which is super fucking dangerous and really terrible and really stupid. Um, and I t- and I, exa- well, exactly. And I told my son because I had someone from my son's school district call me that's with the school district. And they said, hey, listen, here's a little known fact, a little life hack for you guys. If a student walks into a classroom who is fully vaccinated, they can literally go up to a teacher and go, are you vaccinated? And if they don't hear a satisfactory answer that makes them want to sit in the classroom and learn from that teacher, if they're not fully vaccinated, they are fully entitled to walk right the fuck out of that class and go and demand a teacher that's fully vaccinated to teach them. They fully entitled. Every school in this happen? province. <laughs> Why would mean? that ever well, um, your tweet. I, because when I read your, your father, tweet, Dean Blundell, tells you to go to school and do it. <laughs> right. Well, that's one reason. But like when I read your tweet, I was like, well, obviously, this isn't literal. What you're really just yeah. saying is that teachers should be vaccinated. But it seemed to like a lot no, of people literal. thought, oh, it is literal. Well, because 100%. the pi- Yeah, I don't know. But I, I wouldn't tell my kids to do that because we already know because we talked to the teacher. Like, mm-hmm. you know. That's why it would never happen. That's all. I got, but yeah, but your greater point, I think you're, I think you're taking the fun out of it. Mm-hmm. I, James, I think you need to sit back and realize what Dean is doing oh, do here. He, <laughs> okay. he is, what he's doing is he's putting his okay. child in a fucking awful, horribly <laughs> uncomfortable situation, which is a life lesson too, right? Like this is something that That's you need right. to realize, son, you're going to end up in situations in life you're not going to be able to maintain and control, and it's going to be awkward for you. And at the end of it, there might be a fist fight or at least <laughs> the possibility of you trying to run for your life. So this is all good. This is good parenting. I think Dean should teach a course on how to fucking parent your kids. And if <laughs> I had a 15-year-old son, I would do exactly the same thing. Yeah. I would send him to school and go walk into your class and be a dick about it too. Are you fucking vaccinated, teacher? And if they don't give you the answer immediately, yes, I am double vax right away. Then mm-hmm. you go, listen, you dickhead. I'm not fucking sitting in this class. And you walk out. All, now, here, all now of our ho- all parents should be doing exactly what Dean's doing with his 15-year-old son right now. Bingo. He is making him put himself in an awful situation. Uh, and it's gonna it's gonna teach not only the teacher a lesson. But it's also mm-hmm. going to teach that kid a lesson. This Plus, is bingo. fucking great. 15, I love this. Fifteen is the age where Lachlan advocates beating up your son, so that's good too. Right? No, like I, believe, all, no, no. I believe that no, no. was younger. I 15, believe that was a younger age. Fifteen is where I said, if you haven't at least broached the topic of fist fighting your stepfather or father, hmm. you should. Sixteen. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you said. It's too late. <laughs> I'll have to go back to the tape. Fifteen is a great age. You got to step up, right? Okay. So let me, James, let me put it yeah. to you this way. Let me put it to you this way. Lachlan said something on the podcast the other day. So here in Ontario, no vaccine disclosures, nothing. Kids are going back to school tomorrow. Lots went back to school today. Mine's going back to school tomorrow. And um, he asked me, and this was his conversation. Like, he's like, hey, dude, like, what happens if my teacher isn't vaccinated? I go, I'm going to have to think about that one. And because he also asked me, what do I do if the kids aren't vaccinated that I'm sitting next to? And I'm like, well, first of all, uh, the, if the kid isn't vaccinated, they're paying for the sins of their stupid fucking parents. So you can't gang up on them or make them feel bad. Right. 
That's my opinion. I think you got to take it easy on the kids. However, I think you can be totally civil, walk into your classroom and say, Miss McGillicuddy or Father Toucher, whatever his name is, because he goes to a Catholic school. <laughs> Father Toucher. Why just is your a quick question. Catholic school. <laughs> it's so close. Uh, he just walks. Oh, yeah. I mean, just, <laughs> I also crazy. told him he doesn't need to take the religious class to the religion class that everybody has to take. I'm like, no, no, no. Just ask him about genocide. You'll get an A. Um, but anyway, my point was this. Yeah, I'm setting him up for failure big time. But my point was this, is that mean, I told him he has a right to be safe, right? Like he has a right to go into a classroom and Please. know the lay of the land and teachers aren't getting N95 masks. And so they got to supply their own. So there's that problem, too. And I said, it's it's pretty easy to walk up to your teacher and go, Father Nelson, Father Nelson, <laughs> Father Toucher. Just a quick question. Are you fully vaccinated? Yes or no? And he's like, what happens if they say it's none of my business? I'm like, well, then you know the answer, tough guy. You walk out. You go to the principal's office and you say, Mr. Moyo, that's the principal. Mr. Moyo, I just want you to know that my teacher is an anti-science dickhead and I'm not comfortable being in that class. And he's like, am I allowed to call him a dickhead? And I said, mm, probably not. But you know what I'm saying. You like, you get where I'm going is that your, your health is super, super important. Locke just had a little person bring him a beer so he could keep doing the, it's fucking great. Best, so, best day ever. Yeah, it's the best day ever. So um, that started this like cavalcade of like tons of support. I would say the support was like 95 to like five. So I, I had about 12 different texts or emails or tweets from people uh, calling me irresponsible, telling me I was a tool, all that other stuff. Uh, and when I would ask them why, they they would go, uh, two-tiered society. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, whatever. I, I stick to it. Like, I, I know that it's going to be tough for my son, but, like, he's literally concerned, right? The best, cons- best thing he's for him. fully vaxxed, fully concerned, and he has the ability to actually stand up for his rights and the rights of the greater good and his own safety by being civil and asking a normal question. And... As it was told to me by people in the school board, that is all our kids have to do if they're uncomfortable. Walk into the principal's office and say, I am not comfortable with that person teaching me. And they will move you to another class or they will change your situation. It's fucking brilliant. Nobody told them to be about it, but it is true. It's 100% factual. You can do that in Ontario. I love it. James, James I think just based on what I, I can glean from spending the amount of time that I spend with you on a weekly basis. I think James is in a position where he wants to do so much better for his kids than what happened to him. So he would never want to put his kids in a difficult situation. And I, and that's fair, James. And well, my kids are seven and five though. Like what you were, you're talking yeah, about, Dean sounds like, it sounds like a high school, like I would tell my high school age kid to do that because, you know, I, I want them to be political in a good sense and I want them to be able to speak for themselves. And if they feel yeah. like they're being, you know, um, put in an unsafe position, they should be able to speak out about it when they're that age. But seven and five, I'm, I don't trust them with the complexity of the issue. So, but I hear what you're saying. Like they're wearing masks. And they're at school. They are not vaccinated because they're so young. But, you know, once um, either something is approved or they get to the right age or wh- whatever comes first, they'll get vaccinated. And, you know, uh, and you're right. Whoever said it, I think it was Lachlan that um, living where I live, I, like our, our little town has had one case. And then our general area, uh, we were a hot spot last week for like a second. And there was 12 cases. <laughs> so there's not really. Well, yeah. Your concerns all, are different, right? Concerns yeah, your concerns different, are different. Yeah. But also, I think, I think when you, you got to take into perspective where we came from, right? Like, Dean had a, a shitty upbringing, right? And, 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 and I don't mean that. I, I, I think you look back on it now and go, yeah, maybe my dad didn't need to beat the shit out of me for thirteen straight years, right? <laughs> yeah. And then. But maybe there are some lessons I learned from that. For sure. Right? And then, and I had kind of a shitty upbringing as well. But I also take a look at some of the things that happened to me as, as, as life-defining, as, as character-building things, right? Like, I wouldn't be the type of person I am. I wouldn't have the work ethic that I have if I didn't have the life, like, if I didn't have the upbringing that I had. Mm-hmm. James, we're sort of 
Dean and I are kind of right here. Like, okay, shitty upbringing. I get the sense that you're, you, you had another level and anybody that I meet that had that other fucking level is very protective of their kids. We can talk about the fact that they might be a little bit younger right now, but I have a feeling that you're going to be the type of parent that, and, and this isn't a bad thing. I'm not criticizing you. You're going to be the type of parent that wants to protect them from the, from the possibility of any sort of fucking craziness. Whereas I was, I was the type of parent that was like, when there was a bullying situation, I told my girls to go to school and punch the bully in the face and that I would Hard. deal with it. Hard. Yeah. And so it's just different. If I had gone through what you had gone through, I may be, I may be approaching this differently. Well, I hear I, what D Dean is doing with his 15 year old. And I'm like, fucking right. Send I, him in there. I, I'm Put with a you. Hard helmet on him. I was raised, I was, I was one time my, my mom told me when I was like six to do that. Uh, some guy picked on me at school and she told me to go punch him in the nose. And then, um, the kid came to my house after school that day and walks to the door and knocks. My mom answers it. And he goes, Jamie punched me here, 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 and here. And my mom was like, why did you punch him so many fucking times? And I was like, I kept on missing his nose. <laughs> and, as, and, and I don't know if I would say exactly that to my kids, but what I would really try to instill in them is this idea that they know how to tell the difference between being right about something and being effective in your situation. So like, if you're able to like, de-escalate something or, you know, or use your brain instead of your brawn, I would probably advocate that because once you escalate, then you have to not only put your trust in yourself, but then you have to make sure that the thing in front of you that you don't trust doesn't fuck you over. Like, you know, and that's so, a bridge too far for me. Being right is never something that I worry about. First Albertan in history to say so. <laughs> you know, part of it, part effort. of it is, yeah, it is. Uh, part of it is too, and and, and, I, and I put it in his hands. Like I said, if you're comfortable with it, that's what you do. If you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. Like, and he's like, no, I'm totally comfortable with it. I just wanted to know what my recourse was because I don't want to get sick. I don't want to make you sick. I don't want to make people I love sick. I love how he thinks, right? Like he thinks selflessly because. One of the things that came back when I told people, hey, listen, if, if, if you're uncomfortable with an unvaccinated teacher, fucking get your kid out of the class, tell them to do it. One of the things that came back was that people were telling me um, how, how I was adding more division to an already divided world. I could care less about the division in this already divided world because I'm very comfortable knowing where I am today. Where I am is, is I've prepared my kids to be able to make hard decisions through a series of really thoughtful, thought provoking uh, ideas that we hold really fucking true, which is, you know, do they share values that you share, which is his values are, hey, I'm vaccinated for other people, vaccinated for my friends, vaccinated so I don't make other people sick. I know I can probably survive this. And I've given him all the source information. So he's really well prepared where the breakdown occurs with unvaccinated kids is the parents are all PPC voters, all of them. And not a horrible thing. <laughs> and I'm That's watching where the vote compass told me to go. <laughs> yeah, me too. And the block They're like, looks like you might want to vote for the PPC. And then I was watching uh, some of the shit that happened over the last 24 hours. Did you guys see Trudeau's uh, stop in London yesterday? Anybody see that? I saw where some, yeah. Yeah, some, was... some mouth breathers were throwing rocks at him. It's fucking unbelievable. He had a gravel. good quote. He had a really good quote. Did you hear the this, quote? They're gonna no. they're gonna give him the win. These fucking they, mouth breathers are gonna a, give this asshole the win. A reporter's Maybe. like, did any hit you in the shoulder? And he looks back and he's like, Does it really matter? Yeah. And I was like, I, that's a really good response <laughs> because yeah. it doesn't. Like, once yeah, you throw it, it no. that's it. He is no. totally using these protests to his advantage, and they don't even well, see it. Well, you know what he's doing is and we'll play the videos, is he is um He's finding a way, right? Like within what is being done in and around yeah. to him, whether it's CPC or PPC, these are all, listen, doesn't matter what party they vote for. These are mentally deranged, lifelong fucking victim, libertarian assholes who just hate everybody but themselves. I That's might be a libertarian it. too, so I think we need to be <laughs> careful about tossing that term around. Yeah. 
um, I think James is even closer to the libertarian sort of. Yeah, but he's um, not nuts. Like he's got a sense of civic responsibility. Ooh. These guys don't. Here's the video. I, you can. Well, he's not I, that nuts. Have a listen. Here we go. See the rocks come in there. They hit him for sure. Le- yeah. Let me just let me rewind it. What you're going to see is over his shoulder, over his right shoulder. Right. You see those two flags. You're going to see a hockey stick with a black flag on it. That black flag, and we'll get to who threw it in just a second because we have their names too. Um, that black flag is where you're going to see these. It's pea gravel. It's just like little stones. But they threw them at Trudeau, and they're all fucking screaming. The all of these people, all of them, and I'll, I'll get to proof, are all like ardent PPC right wing neocon assholes. But watch this. Watch for the rocks. This is great. See that? Yeah. Did you hear yeah. that? Did you hear them? I Did you hear, hear these yeah. people? Did you hear? Like, listen to them. You can, the, you can hear the rocks flying too. Yeah, you can hear the rocks hit the side of the bus. But these, this is like third world country shit. This is the kind of stuff you see in like Azerbaijan every couple of years. Why are we here though? Gaza I mean, we, or, or Oklahoma? Oklahoma. Can we, can we explore Oklahoma. that a bit? Like, we're here for a reason, though. Yeah. Like, I mean, well, I'd like I, to. I, I Dean. I, I understand what you're saying, and I think it's really easy to focus on the guys throwing gravel and 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 the upside down flags and 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 who they're supporting and mm-hmm. and Chad and the Viper glasses. I mean, I think it's it, that's all easy. That's low hanging fruit. Mm-hmm. I think we're here for a reason, and I think it's because people are done. They're 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 fucking sick of the bullshit and and i think that's a dangerous place to be and i don't know what the answer is and james you follow this a little bit more closely than i do i think you're right i i think i think everyone has trudeau fatigue and i think if if throwing gravel happened in, in the 2019 election i think it would benefit trudeau but this time i think people are like well, I don't think people should throw gravel at that cock-sucking piece of shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, that's the shift, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite a shift. Quite yeah. a shift. Um, I'm worried. I, I do and I'm I don't. Worried. Like, listen. Let me let me just say let me just say this is is. I, I think we all have a difference of opinion. We respect each other enough to share those opinions and not jump down each other's throat, or at least when we do it, make it funny. So, like, you're saying people are sick. You're saying people are tired, and this is what they're doing. Normal people don't show up to a protest dressed like fucking, these are the two yahoos that did it, dressed like fucking Donald Trump and some fucking mouth breather. Most Most people don't. These two yahoos and the guy on the left is, I think his name's Scott or Shane. I'm not too sure. Uh, if you go to DeanBlundell.com, you can actually read who these guys are and you can check into them. And we've got another post coming kind of detailing. Both these guys are white supremacists, both of them. And both of these guys are huge supporters of this piece of shit. Max Bernier, the leader and chef of the Hillbilly Party of Canada. <laughs> and these are the people doing it. I want to just put this out there. This is Chelsea Hillier. Does that last name sound familiar to you, Locke? Uh, yeah, that's, so that's a daughter of Randy. Yeah, that's Randy's dumpy kid, and okay. she's running for her dad and Max Bernier down in London. And uh, oh, is this Randy jumped over the PPC party? Uh, yeah, after I believe being- so, yeah. Kicked yeah, out of the Conservative Party? Okay. We, we asked sure. him that when he was on the podcast, remember? I don't even remember what he said. I, well, he was like, hey. he skirted it. Yeah. So, so Chelsea Hillier is uh, a, a PPC candidate. I don't know much about her other than she's a Hillier. So she's clearly got some fucking character flaws and she's a lot dumber than the majority of other politicians because What's she's a Hillier. What's Middlesex mean? Uh, London, Ontario. It's just a, an area. Elgin Middlesex oh. is like York okay. region or I, different I thought regions. It was right? I yeah. <laughs> Overies. So. What if you'd look at her at her Twitter feed, which go ahead and look at it. I could give two shits. Everything here she does is about following this guy around and showing up to protest. Nothing to do with the PPC do this. Their entire platform is about taking a shit on other people and showing up to other protests and whipping people up to the point where uh, Bernier released this like the time for the revolution is now like January 6th kind of fucking insurrection video just and I'm not even going to play it because it bothered me. 
And I'll tell you why it bothered me, because it's the exact same thing that Trump did. And I, I don't know if, if you can draw conclusions or if you can draw a straight line, James. But to me, harnessing or pandering for votes from hateful people who pretend they're fucking victims, who hold the victim card. All this is is called the personality shit. Like to me, uh, Bernier, who is the head of the hillbilly party of Canada, is just courting fucking racist hillbillies that like fucking nothing more than to shit on things because they're not allowed to do things. Like to me, this whole thing, uh, this whole yeah. thing, well, this is, I could be wrong. I'm just putting it out there for a conversation. But to me, all these people are angry about is not being allowed to go to fucking Ponderosa like everybody else will uh, be on the 22nd yeah, of September. Yeah, but Damn. when, when I, I, I think I interviewed Bernier in 2017 and um, I asked him about what he's, I, I think I preambled by saying that some of his policies sort of mirror the Trump administration policies, things like immigration and um, and resource management and things like that and free market stuff. And I asked him um, if if you know if his demographic, his intended um, target was the same. Uh, was it like Canada's mega or whatever? Was it like sort of like a Trump thing? And um, while he didn't be like, yes, yes, it was. He all he did was compliment Trump. So and then here's the thing, though. Here's here's what makes it shitty. It's working. Um, the Green Party, it took them like 30 years, like three decades to get like four or five percent of the of the public to be a Green Party mm -hmm. supporter. Mm -hmm. And the PPP PPC has been around for what, five years, four years or something. And Is they're already and they're already at eight percent. So it's like. You know they did in in four, whatever, however long it's been. Three, but is four, that five the years. success of the party, James, or or is, does it speak more to people's level of intolerance for politics as a whole that they're willing to vote for something as extreme as the PPC? Well, either way, on it's their yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't know if it's so much if it has. I think it has less to do with the success of Maxine Bernier and his messaging as it does to, as people's disillusionment disenfranchisement of of the overall establishment of politics as a whole but mm -hmm. that crowd is like um they have a, the, the issues that they have in common with the run of the mill conservative is actually quite extensive like they are the fringe of people that, but they have like a 70 percent thing where they agree with like slightly right-wing people so they know that their party depends on people that have these views don't forget max bernier won 12 rounds of a leadership vote when Andrew Scheer became leader at the very yeah. end when all the dairy people fucking just stacked the vote. So that tells you that the party is kind of libertarian. He got know? beat by, he got beat by cow farmers. Well, he got like, uh, the, the uh, I, he got lobbied you know, out. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And there was a, like, what was it like? 10,000. Well, obviously remember. they knew, obviously they knew something that we didn't is that he had the, uh, the, 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 they knew he was gumption to be room. this guy. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, dude, listen. Well, he was showing signs of that back in that convention, wasn't he, James? Oh, for yeah. sure he was. And because the I mean, whole his immigration dairy policies and everything was, was, it was a free market argument. Why they had to have a dairy board. Why don't you just let the free market? That's a very libertarian thing. That was his position. And she was like, oh, yeah, I don't like the union, eh? Well, hey, dairy union, <laughs> vote for me and I won't take away your board, your dairy board, so that you'll still be able to rely on that. So um, so the, the moderates won out, but the, the libertarians are like, we're at least 40% of your party probably, you know, like yeah. with, with leanings towards libertarianism anyways. And which I get that, bad, by the way. Like, I get that. I get the disillusionment. I get the disenfranchised yeah. voter. I get the fact, like, listen, they, 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 we, we argued against big government for the past, like, what, fucking five, six months. We yeah. went after C10. We went after the do no harms bill. We went after freedom of speech. Uh, and I still I stand up for everybody who shit posted me today. I stand up for their ability to, to freely tweet me back. I don't think anybody should be taken off Twitter. I don't think Max Bernier should be taken off Twitter. There's a call for him uh, specifically with that. Like the revolution is our duty video that he put out today, which was fucking egregious and gross. Um, to the majority of Canadians who actually like living here, who don't think we need a revolution, who just want to go and vote for somebody who actually has their back or represents their interests. Like, you know, you're watching people kind of take sides according to whatever narrative that they want pushed, and that's the party they want. Well, if if the narrative that's being pushed by the PPC is anti-immigration, of fucking course they're going to have assholes like Mark Emery who tweeted yesterday about Trudeau, quote, he's a vile leader. He deserves much worse fate. I'm thinking of Mussolini. Mussolini was hung. 
This is the Prince of Pot. He is r- fucking running for the PPC. And yesterday he tweets out, let's hang the fucking prime minister. Hmm. God, that's not a fucking part. Like that. That's not a party, man. Yeah. This is not a fucking political party. This is a collection of mentally unwell professional fucking victims who hate everything other than the one thing they don't, which is this perception of freedom. And every single one of these dumb cunts is free. I every one getting- of them. I I keep going back to Dean and again I keep going back to why are we I'm here? Right. You can just no, say I'm no, right. No, I I want to be careful with that because I I I <laughs> I, I don't think you are. I, I I think you're wrong. I I don't think it's about the parties. I think I think we need to look at why we are where we are at and why people might be forced to vote a certain way. If you take a look at what happened in the United States of America four years ago, five years ago with Trump getting in, I think a lot of people were at a point of exhaustion and they were just done with the sort of the traditional idea of what politics was. And that was what Clinton represented. And they were just ready to give a fucking crazy person a shot. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think that's where a lot of people are at. I don't think that I don't think I I think I I feel comfortable about where we're going based on James's observations of these protests in that. I mean, what he just said about Trudeau and about how people view him now and and why th- these protests might not be working in his favor and they may have 4 years ago. Yeah. Because and and that that actually gives me a sense of calm because I'm worried that that's going to work against the conservative party and it it actually might lend itself to to Trudeau and and, and his campaign moving forward and on September 20th we actually get him for another fucking Yeah, but what uh, sorry, sorry. I'm knows- sorry. I, I what is it that what is it that that has to change about our behavior, but a lot, though? Like, but a like, lot we're of, talking. Hang on, we're talking about two different things here. We're talking about um, you. You seem to think this is the representation of a country that's sick of shit, right? No, and so yeah, this yeah, is yeah, this yeah, is understandable. I, I don't think everybody is. Not everybody that might vote for the PPC or everybody that is willing to throw a vote that way. Are you is, sick of shit? Is at as as at a point where uh, they're going to a Trudeau. Um, uh, gathering and, and throwing fucking rocks at him, like that. That extreme side of thing is a very, very small portion of of the of the voting public. And, and yeah. down in the states, the same thing applies. I think a lot of people just said, "Fuck it, I'm voting for Trump." And then a year in, they went, "Oh shit, I voted for that asshole." Right. Like I, I think there's a lot more of that than there is of that. You know, those two guys marching on their way to protest another Trudeau thing. Is yeah. that fair? Yeah, it's, I think it's, so. I hope. I think so. I I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, you say that it's just a small group of people, but small groups of people like us are also sick of the government like they are, and we're not acting like cocksuckers. But we're the like, guys. We're, not, we're the no, guys. Hold it. Hold it. We're not doing fucking this. Fucking we're not doing this. These are yeah. PPC people screaming, lock him up, standing outside a bus. The, quite an academic slogan. The other options suck. Wow. Fuck. Brilliant. That's not what the a right bunch of, of fucking syllables. political. No rappers <laughs> the other options that, suck. Not one rapper. <laughs> like, it's like, it's almost like you're saying if you're disenfranchised, it's okay to act like that. And I know I wrote the piece about, Theo Fleury yesterday, but that piece was about, hey, listen, understand where his lack of trust comes from. I get where their lack of trust comes from, but you still have a fucking responsibility to act like a human fucking being. And that isn't it. I'm still thinking about burning it all down, though. Like, I'm still I'm still thinking about a protest vote here. I think for who? For who? I don't know yet. I I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh. And that's the thing that, that, that yeah, but my, uh, my thing is like, you're, you're sorry, you go back to the same thing. I come back to the same thing and I'm fucking red hot about it because it's important, right? Like we still act like concerned citizens for a reason because it's for the greater good. 
we don't go out and cause problems. We don't throw things at people because that's what babies do. Babies get mad and throw fucking tantrums and they throw shit at people and they but don't Dean, get what they want. Where are we at? What, are the, what well, is the option? Dude, we're at, the option is to not act like that, dude. Like that's no, what I'm, I'm saying, saying is that we I'm all feel the same way the they do. I'm talking about when it comes vote. down to voting. What are we going to get? What are we going to get to replace this dick? I, I'm not, uh, dude, I'm not even talking about replacing these Doesn't guys. Doesn't that fr frustrate you, though? Doesn't no, it that doesn't frustrate me because I still have to be the same cat. Like, I still have the same values. I still have to be able to come here and do my job. I still have to be kind to people. I still have to learn how to evolve. I still have to be able to work within the framework of the society that I live in, and I happen to like it. And that's what people seem to fucking forget. Like, all of these people that are acting like this are acting on the most selfish, boorish, emotional response that makes them way worse. Like the people that are throwing rocks and jumping around and acting like cocks at, at these things. All of these people, all of these people are complaining. Complaining's for fucking losers. Do you see a solution there? I don't. I see people that are just pissed off that government is something they don't like. And there's a guy harnessing that anger and his name's Max Bernier. And all of those people, all of them are fucking hillbillies. All of them to me. Because they don't give a shit about the greater good. They care about them fucking selves. I think that, that that maybe you're being hard on them because you disagree with the issue that they're protesting about. No, I Are, disagree with how they're behaving. I don't care that they're... How, is, I don't how, do care. They, how do they differ? I'm not saying you support this or anything. I'm just asking, though. But do they really differ all that much from protests like are, are they really all no, that different no no i feel the same way about those people too you fucking yeah. you're going to change your behavior and you're going to act like a cunt uh because you're not interested in the greater good if you that is not your goal like if, if the goal if your goal in in trying to change politics or trying to have some kind of conversation because they think they're having a conversation these dimwits what, they're a, not. what else what else are you going to do though you're going like, to fucking you're going to you're going to I'm not Here's talking about do. throwing rocks at the. I'm talking about any voting protest. Yeah, a lot of people are voting PPC, man. Like, like it, they're gonna I get know. like they're gonna. It's gonna be disjointed. They might not win a seat. They could win two or three, but um, they're gonna get votes across the country. And there's two reasons, right? One is because people really hate Trudeau, and the pendulum wants to swing as far as it can the other way. Yeah. And the other reason is, um, Aaron O'Toole made a choice that will either prove to be brilliant or the reason why he loses and that choice was to go towards the center um to flip-flop on that gun thing i think that 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 crystallized that strategy that he's embarking on which is move towards the center get us far away from these like far right crazy uh libertarian conspiracy types as i possibly can uh, he'll still s find a way to suck that cock though well it's going to be a very <laughs> it's going to be it's it's not just going to be hypocrisy though that when he does that like he clearly has pivoted to the center as as like this is where my this is where i am now now I don't he might, disagree he might want to placate and and take these issues you know joe biden had the easiest job ever because when he was elected <laughs> when he was campaigning the only thing that he said that was really um, something like a gift to the far left were these issues that required almost nothing from him, like a policy about uh, trans people in the military. Um, it, 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 that's just a stroke yeah. of a pen. He didn't have to do anything. So there's no effort. And I see the same thing happening with O'Toole, or I see that, that I, I think that's what's going to happen, which is he's going to say something like, you know, we want to make sure that the free market is protected and all these crazy right wingers go, yay, because they believe in that, but it really doesn't mean anything at all. It probably doesn't, you know, mm. so the low hanging fruit of the, that's back to where I'm at. If you're watching anybody stand up to a podium right now and you're at, at, at the very least paying attention to what the promises might be, whether you're keeping, you know, a ledger, or, it doesn't even matter. You're keeping a mental note as to, OK, well, Singh said this, Justin said this, O'Toole said this. What am I getting with my vote? If you are actually sitting there doing that math, you're an idiot. You're yeah. a complete fucking moron because none of it is going to come to fruition. Mm -hmm. I think we're at a point right now where people are so not just, and this isn't just about sick of Justin Trudeau and the, like the complete bullshit that comes out of his mouth every time he speaks. This isn't about that. This election is to me more about most 
people with functioning brains, with connected brain stems, look at what we have and go, I have no one to vote for. Mm -hmm. We are in such dangerous times politically. It's not even funny. This has nothing to do with the issues. Mm -hmm. This has everything to do with what fucking moron am I going to put in control of this country? Yeah. And not, hey, I like that O'Toole guy. You know, I, he's got an honest face. Yeah. No, it's he's not true. Fucking yeah. moron is mm -hmm. going to run the country for the next four years. And that that's why I disagree with what you're saying, Dean, about these protests and about whether or not we should be judgmental of what's happening at that level, because no one knows what to do anymore. I, I, I spoke with a, with a guy who is in charge of a multi-million dollar company, golfed with him on Saturday, him and his wife, his wife's uh, a nurse. They're very, they, they own a beautiful home. They came from Vancouver. They sold their place in the lower mainland. They were able to buy a really big fucking place in Edmonton. He came here for a, a, a really good job and he's in his fifties. He had a great career before that. This is a new career. He's doing very, very well. And then I spoke with somebody who owns a bar today who picked up my beer tab at lunch. They said the exact fucking same thing to me. I don't know who to vote for. I'm, I'm at the point where I just want to burn the whole thing down. Go and ahead. to me, to me, that's, Go. that's where we're at. It's not yep. about looking at Chad and Terry throwing gravel All right. at, at, at Justin Trudeau's bus, which by the way, is um, awful. Maybe. And I, and it's, it's stupid, but to me, it's about, we don't have a fucking choice and people have realized that. And, and it doesn't matter whether you're living in the river Valley here in Edmonton, or you are running a multi-million dollar company. You, you don't have a fucking idea what you want to do. You know, and I find that I, I, I get it. I get it because I get the sentiment. I get the feeling. I, I think that is such a fucking cop out for people like, you know, if you can't find your way to vote for somebody that is that is uh, that may represent part of, um, you know, an interest in serving society, which this fucking loser doesn't. He's not interested in the greater good. He's interested in causing a re revolution and he's interested in getting back at the PC party and he's interested in courting crazy fucking people. And that's what he did to the point where you made fun of him yesterday in maybe the tweet of the year. Let's play a round of guess his name. This was taken at a protest. One of Justin Trudeau's <laughs> campaign stops this weekend. I'll start Chad. Uh, and then it went to Lance and then it went to Kurt. Lance was good. Then it went to Chad. We got a couple of Bretts in there too, which I thought was really uh, cool. Kyle, uh, Bubba, I thought Kyle at one point was going to start trending in Canada <laughs> based on Bubba, that tweet. Dude, you had like uh, two hundred thousand people interact with that tweet yesterday. Like you had a lot of people interact with that tweet. Yeah, and they interacted with that tweet because I would like to say that I guy. stole that idea from Chris. Well, it doesn't matter who you stole producer. it from. It doesn't matter. What matters is is that this is the guy. I mean, yeah. these are the people. Do you see a solution here? Or do you just see angry people <laughs> who just are looking for someone to vote for? Like, what the fuck do you see here? Do you see normalcy? Do you see like someone who's interested in solutions and policy and, and like someone's monetary policy? No, or, I get what it. You know what? Do you know, you no, know what? I, these I guys see, are just here to fucking wreck stuff. And I they're going to wreck people, stuff. Dean, I see two people and only one of them knows how to play thumb war. <laughs> 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 hey, listen, and it's not like it's not like I don't get where they're coming from. I think Justin Trudeau's a douche hole. I can't stand that he's our prime minister. I can't stand that he fucking makes everybody kowtow to what he thinks is kind and nice and good. I'm all about the freedom of speech. I'm all about these guys voicing their opinion. That ain't it. And every single one of these guys somehow is voting for the PPC. So what does it tell you, for fuck's sakes? Like, what does it tell you? Like, you're making fun of this guy saying, hey, this is a chat. 200,000, 200,000 people made fun of him with you. And you're and, and some of us are sitting there going, but let's just kind of sit back and let's see where these people are coming from. Does it really fucking matter? 
I don't think it does because these people still have a responsibility to be a good citizen for people in the world and they're not doing it and they don't care because they're not getting something and they want something. And really, honest to God, what they want is they want to go into Montana's and they're not going to be able to. And I think (laughs) that's what that whole thing's all about. What do you think would happen if just I'm just hypothetical because I don't know the answer. I don't think it probably would be as bad as you think. But what do you think would happen if Max Bernier and his party? That's a really good question. What? What do you? What if they won? What if it was Prime Minister Bernier? Because because what I think would happen is those people would then become deactivated and they'd be like, oh, we won. Okay, let's just go home, back to our jobs and hope Max does well. <laughs> you know, they're not going to continue to There protest, might be a but- problem on public transit. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, we might have a hard time. Like if these if these guys, if, they're, if their guy gets in, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm I, fucking I, concerned. I don't that- know if I'd want to take a Greyhound again. No. <laughs> I feel the exact same way. I do. I do. And and you know what? I give people the benefit of the doubt, Jamesy. I give I, people the benefit I don't know of the if doubt. you do all the time. I do. I, I do. need to say that a lot. I, I do. <laughs> I'm just like, hmm. Look for all the tells. Oh, there's like 17 lie tells that you're showing right now. <laughs> uh, Brad Hopper's pissed at you, Locke. He says, our boy Brad, the paramedic, how the fuck can you have even any sort of understanding for assholes who are blocking our ambulances? That's a great question. Oh, you, uh, you know what? That? That, that, that. That. I, I'm not condoning what they're doing, Brad. I'm just saying, uh, and that's a, that's a fair statement because I understand exactly what he's saying. I, For me, I, I, I'm trying to justify where they're at based on um, what we have to vote on. I'm not condoning it. I'm just saying I understand why we are at where we're at. And I don't think that's enough of a conversation right now. I think a lot of people are sitting there going, okay, yeah, like I I might not necessarily agree with Chad and throwing rocks at the premier, but, or the, you know, the prime minister, but I don't think that, um, I, 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 I don't <coughs> think it's unwarranted. It, People are mad. People are fucking angry and they don't know how they're going to vote this next time I don't to think try to is, fix this. And most people that are mad are not throwing rocks or blocking in. No, no, right? no, no, no. Right. It, it's not right what they're doing, Brad. No. It, it, it isn't. And you, you're 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 right to call me out on that. Um I'm not I'm not agreeing with what they're doing. I'm just saying I kind of understand where we're at. Mm-hmm. And the fact that we're at where we're at, I think, needs to be explored more than just these fucking idiots. Yeah, right? Yeah, critical thought. Yeah, it requires critical thought. Listen, there, there is, and I, I had this conversation with someone the other day, uh, we classify all these people as assholes, correct? Like, oh, that's just an yeah. asshole. But, like, it, there are different types of assholes. There are militant racist assholes. There are militant political assholes. There are... Um, blogging assholes a- and radio blogging assholes. assholes. Radio assholes. assholes. Yeah, there are blogging assholes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> there are a variety of assholes. dirty assholes out there. But the one asshole that I'm talking about is the racist asshole. And and listen, and I do believe this. I believe that, and Maxime, to his credit, he went into where the people were the angriest. He is targeting the people who are the most militant. He's, He's going after. The hornet's nest. Yeah. Absolutely. He is, yeah. he is feeding them red meat with these arrest videos and his revolution video because he is pandering to, pandering to, the racist neo-Nazi weirdo vote, and he's getting it. And so it shouldn't surprise anybody in the country we live in that there are 8% of this country so far to date is like, we're racist, we're fucking losers, and we're angry. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Okay. Okay. Because they did that with Trump, and then all of a sudden- uh, uh, We got to be careful there. Are these guys cool? Oh, you don't no, you don't think no. that he you don't think racists are a, a, attracted to an a guy who has an anti-immigration policy? No, the yeah, first thing I, that you said the first do. thing that you said was that we now know that if it's eight percent support for the People's Party of Canada, that eight percent of Canada is racist. And I, I don't agree with that. that. I don't agree with that either. Was, you, was I, that a, was that a strong comment? It might have been a little bit of a broad <laughs> a, little, brush. a little heavy-handed. 
Yeah, okay. Sorry. I like doing that sometimes, though. It's just me. Um, Who were your okay, worst so representatives? Okay, these now guys. all of you are just like them. <laughs> See these dudes? These are the guys that threw the rocks. That's them making their way to That's the, like saying that every going. NDP person is like a, a, an Antifa supporter or something, you know? Yeah, they probably are. <laughs> um, so, but uh, I would agree. Look with at that. these guys. T- t- these guys are PPC guys. They show up in their PPC gear. They show up with their PPC flag. And the guy on the left is, or sorry, my left, your right, is the guy throwing the rocks. And this is, and the other guy's dressed up like Donald Trump. I okay, mean, let's have let's here. have a conversation C- quickly. I go. mean, take take those cool two assholes out of it, uh, yeah. and 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 take the take what the PPC stands for. Do you want if me to take t- his tweet by Mark Emery out, where he said he wanted to see the the prime minister hung as well? Take that out. How about we I'll look at the platform? Out. Yeah, they don't that have guy. one. Uh, they don't have yeah. one, dude. Their platform is literally that sign that says. All others, all the other options suck. There it is above Prime Minister's head. The other options suck. That's their platform. Their platform <laughs> is just to just to be fucking dicks. That's it. It's pretty they're extensive. Not actually. Wrong. That's there. You know what? At least it is. it's simple, right? <laughs> and that's why they might be growing. Okay, but let, let's just say we take a cross section of Canadians: rural, mm-hmm. east, west, big city. Like, and we put a hundred people in a room. Honestly, how many of those people would you technically classify as racist? Are we taking people of from Western Canada or uh, the no? Rest no, of it's a mix of, of Canada? Canadians, and with you, you don't get to decide uh, cognitive you know, biases included. I would say twenty percent, hundred people. Sorry, what? Got what? Cog- cognitive bias, racial oh, cognitive stop. bias. Yeah, stop. no, I believe in it. I believe in it. Okay. Yeah, I would say twenty um, percent of this country's probably got racist leanings. The I worst, would, the worst thing that ever happened. That's not to a me bad guess. Like a stats yeah. class. Twenty percent, really? Yeah. Come on, Jamesy. What do you think? Yeah, listen. I, I, one of my best, one of my best friends is a black man, and I asked him that exact question once, and he thought that it was fifty percent of white people. And I was like, "Are you serious right now?" And he's are, like, "Yeah, are actually racist." Like, holy shit! And I asked him why, and I asked him why, and. There's an interesting like conversation to be had actually about certain things like like um like black conservatives. They they people think they don't exist, like they're like unicorns or something, right? And because um in oh, no, largely in large no, because largely in black communities, if you're not towing that like almost communist line, that really activist kind of line on a lot of things, which became mainstream last year, you're you know you're kind of berated. You called it uncle Tom. You're da, da, da. There's not very many like black conservatives that you can even name off the top of your head that um, isn't, you know, marginalized. And the reason why I bring that up is because there's a lot of people, a lot more people of color than you think that would be voting for the PPC. And a lot of them would be people that immigrated here versus people who were, who were like the second or third generation here because their perspectives are so different. So the immigrants, coming from a place that actually is a shitty country and they're coming here and they're just thankful to be here and they just want to like go to school and they can't believe my God, this is such an opportunity. And they pursue it like that. Whereas someone who's been here for like two or three generations a family like that has experienced sort of like oppression by the hands of the state, um, you know, uh, in, in history. And of course, now as well, but it's, Canada. it's a totally different type of existence if you're if you're a person of color who moves here from a shitty country or if you're a person of color who's like third generation they are they have totally different perspectives and the the immigrants are largely conservative a lot of times um the refugees and the people who are activists are largely liberal or ndp so it's it's just interesting to but are see. they racist i mean that's just well, I, that's almost a philosophical a long way to get days. to the to the seriously question. Like, like what? Give it, me it a depends. percentage. Give me a, you got a hundred people. Dean's How many of the, I think Dean's onto something. I think Dean's onto something. I don't think that all 20% vote PPC. I think maybe. No, no, like it's not about who they're voting for. It's I'm a, just no, saying. I'm saying, you can I'm classify saying. There's a lot left wing racist is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm saying that there are 20% of this country probably is, is probably racist. And, and I would say it's even more. And I don't think that, that the PPC party is going after racist. And I don't even think, and I was thinking about this the other day, I don't even think that that this is a political... Hold on, I need a moment here. Hang on, hang on. Hold I don't on. even think that I it's a like a political I'm the issue that we have. on this fucking podcast. <laughs> well, if it makes you feel that, better, Lachlan, if, you, if, if Quebec and Alberta successfully separated, be more like 5%, I think. <laughs> 
This is true. You have a lot of racists in Western Canada. A lot of racists. I grew up there. Dude, I get it. I, I know Quebec how- Quebec is very racist. Quebec, yeah, but you can't hand off racist. Like, you guys are right there. Like, it's between you and Quebec, right? Alberta, they're Quebec. Like they got enough the problems, problems, man. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And they get a pass because they're French. It's you. <laughs> I was born in Montreal. I'm a lot I, I want to live in a country where there's only 10%. Yeah. Come on. Well, really? You're gonna have, yeah, you're going to have to wexit. That's what you're going to have to do then and move here. No, no, hold on. Correction. <laughs> We're going to have to maverick. Yeah, that's true. You're going to have to maverick party this bitch. But I was thinking, like, it's not even, I don't even think these people have a political problem. I don't think this is a political problem. That's what I, I was think, trying to take out of it. I was I just trying that, to like legitimately. I think that Bernier is literally is going after. Yeah, I think I think it's just a byproduct of the kind of person he's going after, which is a very fucking angry, mentally unwell person. Like that's. I, 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 I'm t- and I'm talking about the guy. Like, uh, like, listen. If if somebody came to my door, and I'm not encouraging this, but if somebody came to my door and knocked on the door and said, "Hey, listen." Can you spare a meal? I and it doesn't even matter what race they are. Um, I, I'm having a really, really tough time with my family, and I say no based on this is how I'm judging racism. I say no based on the color of their skin or their an, like their an, ancestry. Mm-hmm. Not going to help you because you are from whatever. Mm-hmm. Go away. I don't think we have a high, I don't think we have 20% of the Canadian population that would do that. Really? If, if, so, if, so if you take a hundred at- people from across the country yeah. and, and you put them in a room and you present that scenario to them it and, and just somebody <laughs> knocks on your door, they, they're absolutely fucked and they need a hand what it doesn't even matter it might not even be a meal or a place to stay it might be a bit of gas to get them to the next town and you say no because you are this i, I that to me you think that that's racism. the only uh, i don't and, think and so. that's not the only thing that defines racism I, I that's what i'm basing my my conversation on I, I would like to think that we have less than 10% of the population that would make that judgment and, and, and make that decision based on race. That's Maybe. overt racism though. Like, like yeah. that's like what I'm talking about. There's subtle yeah, there, racism. There, there, yeah. There, well, like, well, like there's subtle racism. Like when you see head, four black like, guys walking down the street and you go to the other side of the street because you're like, Hmm, I don't know who those I guys are. Do that. Well, I know you would never do that, but there are a lot of people that have to ask themselves that question. And these what are, the, I'm thinking these are the kind of people that would like, these are the kind of people that don't give they're a like, fuck. what's up white boy. What are you going to do, man? Like, would, they, would you not cross the street then? Because I've crossed the street for skinheads who were kind of doing shit like that, except not mm-hmm. saying white boy, you know? So uh, even that, like, it's, I, again, it's philosophical. Like, it's not even like you can't pin down that number because you can have neo-Nazi thoughts and never do anything. And you would still be a racist. So it's hard to even like figure it out. The overt yeah. racists, I don't know, man. I, I had to go to the states the first time I heard someone say the n word in a serious way. You know, I've I've heard it in various contexts, in I've joking ways, it. which is still racist and everything. I don't but think I've what, ever heard anybody say it in a in that in, in where I, they meant dude, it. I have. As yeah. a I drove. To, I drove to Myrtle Beach um, I never when have. I was when I was seventeen with two friends. And when we were in Pennsylvania, we ran out of gas and there was this bungalow and we walked up and they, it was like this old lady and this old man, they gave us gas. She gave us fucking finger sandwiches and shit when we left and like refreshments. And she was like small. She reminded me of my great grandmother on the Italian side. And then she's like this. Okay. Just make sure that you turn left and not right. If you turn right, you'll, you'll end up in the land of the N words. And I was like, I was like, okay. She's like, you don't want to end up there. So just make sure you turn left. Okay. It's great meeting you. And it was like, sweet, 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 total devil, racist cunt. Sweet, 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 sweet. Like it was so (laughs) odd to me to see it like that. But I mean, you know, that's the United States. That's (laughs) what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we have a 20% population of that individual. Oh, so you don't think we have 20% of the worst kind of racists? We just have like soft racism in the country. Like, is that it? it? it, 
because it's all, it, it all counts. I think there's like if you're going to take biases. Yeah. It, okay, so it, we uh, all that's also racism. Them. That's also racism, and that's what I'm saying. Twenty percent at least, and and you got to come that far. I mean, you know, overt racist ten percent of the country, maybe, but twenty percent, yes. And to be mentally ill, you have if to be racist, you have to be mentally unwell and undiagnosed and untreated. You have to be a total piece of shit. So um, that's what I see in the PPC party. It, it is. If it Canada, is, I, if Canada was, see. if Canada was a pair of twelve-hole Doctor Martins, it would be like white laces for the first three holes. You don't get it. Okay. <laughs> I don't. There's something to do with Doc Martins and putting white laces in them. I, yeah, I don't get the reference, but I, I know it's because something. the percentage of twelve is three is the percentage. That oh, is it really? Oh. There's a Doc Martin thing there. He's on to some, like I, I know what he's talking about. And I just British don't Knights know. too are apparently subliminal racist shoes. Yeah. Are they really? BK, I, remember BK I, shoes? You were I poor used, if you had BK shoes when I was a kid. I was like, oh, you got British Knights. Does your dad have a job? That's what they I used think to say. I to had. People. I also had pants made from Sears. Did you? Yeah, with the draw lap. I keep bringing this up, but yeah. Do you remember these? I brought these up yesterday too. Like back in the day that we used to make fun of people. I had a pair of these. Everybody's like, Hey, is your dad poor? I'm like, yeah, I'm wearing Cougars. Remember those shoes? That's Jimmy. Do you wear Cougars? (laughs) Come here. Look. Yeah. 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 Did he wear these? Come here and look. He had to have because they were great. Are they plush? Cougar plush. Did you have Cougars? When you grew up, did you have these shoes? Jimmy had Cougars. Yeah, for sure he did. Because look at the sole on him; it's huge. <laughs> yeah, he's a lifter. Jimmy's a lifter. Yeah, got to get some bigger I shoes. When I was a kid, they're Jimmy named after my favorite it. demographic too. Cougars. Cougars. Yeah, yeah. I like cougars. <laughs> Crocodile Rock. Woo! Greatest. greatest Jimmy, do you need another beer? <laughs> Am I going yeah. to get you another beer, please? Yeah. Guys, guys, we're doing a podcast here. Jesus. <sighs> This is more about my drinking time than than this podcast. I hate to tell you guys that. (laughs) Will he stand there and you can just put the beer on his head? There's four of us on this podcast right now. Two of us are drinking. That's 50%. That's 50% of this podcast is drunk. (laughs) They're like 40%. (laughs) What do you say? What do you say? Get him over here. It was a midget joke. What did he say? He said something about 40%. I don't know. Ask him if he thinks like 20% of the country is racist. Ask him. Do you think 20% of the country is racist? Prejudice, not racist. He says 20% of the country is prejudiced. I told you, philosophical. Not it's all subjective. Racist. All relative, subjective, Maybe. all that shit. Yeah. Maybe. All I know is that we've done some good work here today. I think we figured yeah. it out. You can't vote for PPC. You just can't. A vote for the PPC is like just a vote. The vote compass told hatred. me to vote PPC, Dean. <laughs> the CBC yeah. vote yeah. compass said vote PPC. PPC. Yeah. I'm leaning that way right now. Are you really? No. I don't know if I would. I would still be your friend if you voted for PPC, but it would be a stain for sure. (laughs) Purple stain, too. It would be a stain. The fact that I'm on this podcast drunk three out of the five days of the week doesn't count, but no, my PPC (laughs) vote does. That's why you vote PPC, isn't it? Aren't they connected? (laughs) Yeah, that's good. (laughs) I had our guy whip this up today. I thought it would be way bigger than it is. Maxime Bernier, leader, chef. Yeah, they are dead. Dawn of a new day. It's the hillbilly party of Canada. I just see, dude, how do you not see hillbillies? You put this tweet out yesterday. You're like, it's a fucking hillbilly. I'm not Chad's agreeing a with that guy. I, I, I'm not agreeing with that. I'm just saying, I think there's going to be a lot of people that are looking at that, that option on their ballot. Thank you, Jimmy. They're looking at that option on their ballot, not because they're racist, but because they're just they're done. Pissed. They're yeah, fucking pissed off yeah, at, at I what it. the options are. And I, and I, and I listen, I'm trying to warn people not to because of who they are. I mean, that's that's what I'm doing. I'm saying, hey guys, pay attention. I think here. we need a this change. Isn't a party. My problem is, what's the what's the alternative? What are we getting instead of JT? Well, you're getting the re, the you, second half of the revolving door of liberal conservative, uh, you know, um, regimes and scandals and oustings and regimes and scandals and ousting and, re, and take that's, a look. Now we we're at the, we're, we're, about to, we're about to enter the conservative one. I think probably in a minority parliament situation. I, I think it's going to be minority liberal and minority conservative. I'm leaning conservative right now, um, and I think that um, in seven years, uh, when O'Toole's mm-hmm. scandal plagued, then we'll go to Mark Carney, the leader of the Liberals at that time, and we're just going to keep doing this until someone finally. Mm-hmm 
is charismatic enough to lead a party that isn't liberals or conservatives, you know, me. And that's, I think it's us. I think okay, it is. I, I think All you're right. right. So you, you guys in see Alberta, the- can I just give you a microcosm right. of the country quickly? Mm-hmm. So in Super Alberta, successful. we had, we had this woman running this <laughs> province. <laughs> we she had this is. woman in this province yeah. that built this thing above the legislature. She spent a million bucks or whatever it was, hundreds of thousands of dollars to build this like fuck shack. And she would bring people up there and fuck them. And it got out. For and votes? she was also complete. What for votes? Oh, what do you? Oh, sorry, I don't no, know no, what no. you're talking about. No, no, no. She, she was. What's her name? What's her banging? Oh, Jesus, you're gonna make me look this up. Why can't no. I remember? I bet you it's Crystal. It I bet your name's Crystal. No. Oh, what was she? Was she? Name? Was she hot? Kelly Lee. No, no, no. Sherry she wasn't. <laughs> who? Dorothy. Ran Alberta ran? before? Who ran? Rachel no. Notley. Alison no. Redford. No. Yes, she built a really? literally. I swear, because the Sky Palace. She built it for the sole purpose of literally having a place to f- fuck people, like like dudes, okay. like what? like like yeah, the, like the valet guy. Like honestly, th- this is a rumor. It's a strong rumor. It's not. I'm not the. I didn't create this. This is not something that. That, uh, that 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 is w- unknown here in in Alberta. So everyone was so pissed, and not only that, she was awful. She was an awful human being. So we, she was so bad. We got the NDP in Alberta. The NDP in Alberta, Rachel Notley, who came in and pissed off everybody so badly that they put Kenny in, and now Kenny does that press conference on Friday. I've never seen this. This province is so mad at that press conference and what he did on Friday and what he didn't do on Friday that we're going to get the NTP back. (laughs) We're going to have an end. I said on the air today, I said, Rachel, I know you listen. She doesn't listen to the show. (laughs) All you need to do is just sit at home in your backyard and suntan until the next election. Just wait. Don't tweet don't make any public appearances because kenny is handling your fucking platform for you You're allison done. redford let's get back to allison, allison redford. redford this is her right that's her. yes yeah i'm just Awful reading human the, being. the sky palace uh yeah. was a condo uh that she had built and uh rumors are unconfirmed that she would go down and <laughs> lay pipe lay pipe with whoever that's and not, and that's not Lachlan making it up. That's, I kind that of well respect known. it. I know, but I kind of respect it. But like, it, add to that, a woman she was is an advancing awful years. Human being. She was an probably, awful human being. Probably, like, but I still people would. hated her. That's right up your alley, too, James. She's older. What no, that is I like right the other one though. The, the, the other one that used to lead the Wild Rose Party. She's kind. Of, she was kind of hot. No idea who that is. I have oh, no she, idea. Who she's that on is. radio in Calgary now, actually. Oh, is Jimmy it? Jimmy has that? an Allison Redford update. Jimmy, okay, what's the deal, Jimmy? Using taxpayer money for vacations. That was, oh, was the she? other thing. Yeah, yeah. She spas, would. And she would spas fly her. Francisco. She would fly her. Yeah, spas, and mm. she flew her daughter back and forth. Her daughter was, I think, a golf, like semi golf pro or something. She like was that. so brazen, I believe, if I'm getting this right, that she um, expensed uh, like tens of thousands of dollars for her and her daughter. After finding out that she was going to have to resign, yes, yes, like it was her last dip into the trough, right? Like, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. She was she was cra- awful human being, like, um, and people hated her to the point where, like, the conservatives j- lost tough. the election because of her. Mm-hmm. We got yeah. an NDP guy. I don't know how else to say this. We had an NDP government in Alberta. In Alberta. Who was your who was your alcoholic pre, uh, uh, premier for like three decades? Ralph Klein. Who, that guy, that's right. Klein. Bucks. He was the best. He yeah. was awesome. That guy, that guy was sauce that guy, all the time. Oh, Amazing. dude, was he so was drunk all the time. The guy, drunk, yeah. raging, like he would like go. He would get drunk. drunk. Yeah. yeah, he would get drunk and go and 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 walk down the streets of Edmonton and get in fights with homeless guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just trying I to clean things up. Money, clean he up. would go get a fucking job. You lose it. Like he would do shit like that. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. People I, 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 still listen. talk about Klein. They loved him. 
Well, because he, he because he just went about the business of the fl- fucking province and cleaned up all the debt, and then would, was like for a couple of years every year he was giving people checks for like a thousand dollars. So here people- every Albertan gets a check for a thousand dollars because we made so much fucking money. Jimmy, like Hines. that's what he was doing. How much were Klein dollars? Like Klein checks? How much? What was the highest one? There was 700 bucks, I think, everybody in the province got one year. <laughs> yeah, you want to stay in power? That's what you do. You give them like 700 bucks. We've Here's made so he much was, money. Here's 700 out, bucks each. He was bowling out to Serb before Serb was even a thing. Yes, yeah, he was. No, yeah. no yeah. pandemic? Here's a lot of money. <laughs> and and he was crazy, but people still talk. Like, honestly, if Ralph Klein, is he dead? Is Ralph totally. Klein- a hundred percent dead. He's, he died he's like dead. a decade ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. If he was around, God rest his soul, he would win. Yeah. Was- Same with Preston Manning. I mean, if he was alive today, Preston he's Manning. Al- <laughs> <laughs> he is alive. <laughs> <laughs> I would vote for Preston. We should get him out of the gut. Stop it, Jimmy. Stop it. Jesus. <laughs> what's going on? Oh, attacked. Jimmy likes Jimmy likes Preston Manning because Preston loves Jesus, and so does Jimmy. That's why he likes Preston. Oh, Jimmy, Manning. yeah, you yeah. Don't need Jesus, it, No, he doesn't. You don't need Jesus. If Jesus was around, I'd vote for him. Yeah, so yeah. would I. God rest his soul. <laughs> uh, thanks, boys. Great to talk yeah. to you today. Good to bat that around too. I I enjoyed talking about that. The rock throwing. I enjoyed talking about the mouth breathers. I'd enjoyed talking talking to you guys about my son's back to school plan, where he's going to out all the unvaccinated teachers. I encourage and have this. A real, real great year. It's going to have a great year. I'm he's really looking following forward. in the footsteps of <laughs> his father. <laughs> Can I just point out today, Dean? You do kind of you do kind of look like Luca Magnata's tennis coach. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I do have a well, one uh, quick thing to ask you guys. There was racism in there. Uh, okay, is that what you're talking about? <laughs> what? Are you one of the no 20 racism. games? They're that's both a little white. bit of racist. That's a little racist. They're all um, white. You can't, be, can you, I, can, you can't be racist against white people. That's can why I, I ask you guys ginger. All of them. Can I ask you guys a question? That's awesome. Can I ask you guys a quick question? Just a quick question. So I went out for uh, dinner with a female last week. And... Had a great time. Nice person. Just a friend. <laughs> Nothing major. But I haven't been out for dinner with just a female in a it's long like it's time. It's a specimen. I went out is with she, a female homo do, do sapien. Can we, we establish week? something? Mm-hmm. Who who set Doesn't the data? Doesn't matter. Uh, it it, it was mutual. important. It was mutual. Yeah, you were on like, the phone. And for, for, who for, said, no, 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 no phone. No phone. It was like, no, no. It wasn't phone. It was like FaceTime. You know, she, like, no, no FaceTime. It was just like what texting were you doing back and forth. How the fuck did this come about? Easy, I, it came about because this is important. Okay, it came about because she's a professional person. I'm a professional person, both in media. Uh, there was like a, a mutual admiration for, I think, the work. And then we went, it, she's just a friend, just a friend. We're just friends. Hey, we should go up for and drinks. You yeah, or her? No, no. Uh, no it wasn't me. No, it was her. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This helps. Yeah. And so, tell your story. Anyway, we went for a nice dinner and uh, well, we well. go sit down and the Jays are playing and they've been on this fucking crazy streak. They won again yesterday. They're just pounding teams trying to get into the playoffs. I fucking love the Blue Jays. Fucking A's. That was a oh, huge sweep this weekend. Huge series. And then they walked out Simeon, of there and they just. Come on. I know Simeon was the 37th yesterday, too, by the way. Fucking They're, Grand Slam? Yep. Big, big salami yesterday. They went eat nothing again. But anyway, my point is this, is I really wanted to watch the game. And, and 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 I know I haven't been out for a long time. And I'm like, okay, I'll go for dinner. So we went for dinner. Had a great time. Great person. But the game was on. And I was like trying so fucking hard you not to watch it. in the restaurant so that I you could see out of the corner of your eye you had access to the yeah. television. This yeah. is a strong male move. You shouldn't this feel guilty a, about this. I don't feel guilty about it in as much as like, the, you know, I really wanted to pay attention to this conversation because I really like this person. And then I'm like, I, I Do still- Do you want a banger? I, no, I don't think so. No, I don't. I don't. hasn't even entered my mind because it's like not, I, I'm not- Why do you lie to us? Why do you lie to us? the podcast? Do I, what do you mean? Do I watch the podcast? This does podcast? the girl, does the female- Watch I don't the podcast. know. Okay. Don't know. God, I have no idea. So you, so you don't want to bang her. So you don't find her attractive at all, right? Uh, she's an you attractive have a picture woman. Of her? No, Would I'm not I talking. Bang her? I don't know. There's no substance. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> we need a little more context not, here. Not Dean, really worth not your time. Helping. You're I don't not. think she's I, worth. Why would you go out for dinner with somebody <laughs> if you don't even have the remote? Like, because he okay, hates her. Listen, he fucking hates her. If she showed up at your door right now 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Dean! 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 And she's naked. Would you want to take her into the kitchen or if any room person or showed up to my and- door, if any person showed up to my no- my door naked, I would call the cops. I'll be like, there's a naked person at my door. I have no idea who this person what is. What if well, the cops didn't show up to me? <laughs> cops are here. They're naked. Uh, <laughs> I am pretty sure I would sleep with just about anybody if they showed up naked at my house. <laughs> That includes you, James. <laughs> the whole point of me asking you guys. To Edmonton. No one ever whole, said that with a smile. I'm going to get a ticket to Edmonton. The whole point of me telling you guys this story is what I want to know. We what are is getting the context. Etiquette? This is all. What is, all no, you're not. You're di- no, you're not. You're saying it's no. for context for the conversation, but I'm asking about watching television while you're out with someone of the opposite sex. Like, is it a, a thing to do? Because like to me, I'm still yes. doing that. I'm still in that hole. Not interested in this. Rather watch the baseball my, game. I'll tell you a story about my wife and I. When we go out for dinner, she scopes out the room and looks to see if there's any televisions within ear, uh, like eye shot. And she will automatically sit down at the seat that eliminates any possibility of me watching the game. And the reason she does that is because she knows that if she wants me to be present, if she wants me to be engaged in the conversation that we're having about our children, the dog, Jimmy's farts, whatever it is, she definitely wants me not to have access to a television. Right. So and and she's smarter than me, so she quite often will scope out these situations before I realize she's done it, and then I know that if I'm sitting in a certain seat or in in a restaurant where there's access to a television, she's already done the groundwork. Yeah, but Dean, did you want to like really looking back in hindsight? A, my, in hindsight, Dean, the A's. Why would you go for dinner? In hindsight, Dean, did you want to not take it to date level with this person? Like, like, did you I don't know wanna, in the back of your yes, mind? You know what? I don't want to get yes to that Yes and no. I don't want to take it to date level with anybody. Oh, Nobody. So next time, open with that and you can watch the game. And that boring fucking girl that you went out with. That you no, she's so not much. boring. She was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. As a matter of fact, you want to know how much of a fucking gentleman I've become? I moved. I moved before she got there because I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to not watch this fucking baseball game. And it's super rude of me to fucking sit here and go, yeah, yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah. Tell me more. Oh, fuck. Yeah. What a comeback. I have a question oh. for you that's going to establish everything that we need to know about this conversation moving forward. We can actually yes. end it with this one question. Yes. When you were having dinner with this woman that you didn't want to bang, that you oh, did you pick up the tab? They went Dutch. 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 Well, that really confuses me. Okay. Why? Um. Well, because you know, part of it is like, so listen, and I'm, the reason why I'm asking you guys is been out of the game, don't want to get into the game. And so I want to make it perfectly clear every time or any time I'm with someone of the opposite sex, this is just a, we're just hanging out. We're just see if our values match up and then maybe we'll go from there. Maybe we won't. But it was important to me to establish that parameter because I've always been, let me get it. I'll big wheel, right? Let me impress you with this. And I'm like, nah, fuck. I'm going to do the exact opposite of everything I used to do. That's why I'm, I'm going to tell the, here now. I'm going to tell the honest, lying, honest truth about everything. Well, you should have said that before you went out. You should have been like, okay, we can go to the bar, but just so you know, it's totally just platonic. And you know, and that's that. Okay. Hold on. I, I, but listen, that's I think if you're having that conversation about like whether or not this is platonic or it might lead to something, I think you're, you're just a dick as opposed to just saying, yeah, sure. Let's go. We'll have some fun. We'll talk and then, you know, hang out. And it was a lovely time. I had a great time. And and I will I do that again with that person for sure because I enjoyed the conversation I enjoyed Next what question. we did. Yes. When you were beating off that night, were you thinking about her? <laughs> no, obviously not. Jesus, he's not the answering. Waitress. The waitress. <laughs> My waiter's name was Keith. I still well, maintain. Listen, I'm not going to judge you if you were beating <laughs> off to. Keith bending over to pick up a water glass <laughs> off your table. We don't know the hey. gender of Keith, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Keith, it's a different world out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no judgment. I just, I, yeah. I know you're not judging. I was just, it, it was a very odd situation because I'm like, uh, normally if I was with Did my you feel ex, guilty I would just watch TV. I'm, I'm judging. I'm judging, but I'm only judging Dean in this situation. Okay. Now, hold That's on. Good. Let me ask you a question. So what was it? The eighth uh, that they tied it up? It was two, eight. It yeah, was Friday tied it night. Up, tied and it up were, eight eight, and then was it the down sixth or the eighth inning. Then down they, nine eight. It was in the they eighth. They scored and then six they, fucking runs in the eighth inning. 
They did. And one yeah. was a Grand Slam. Yes, it was. Did yeah, it was uh, Lord Esguriel Grand Slam. Did you didn't fucking gooseneck when it, when it hit the Grand Slam? Didn't see it. I didn't I see it. Guys, see I gotta buddy. go. I gotta run. Okay. Bye, Take guys. James yeah. DeViore, ladies hey, and good gentlemen. Seeing you. Yeah, I didn't see it. James I didn't see the home run. My house, he went to buy I, a ticket. I went home. <laughs> yeah, because you'll fuck him. I went home and I watched the highlights and I was like, as hard as a decision that was to move away from the television, I made it and I enjoyed it. I just didn't know if it was rude. Like, where where are we at? Like, should should I be allowed to watch television? Should I go to places that don't have televisions? I have I'm a confused. Diff- I have a different relationship with my wife now. Like, if if there is a big game on, and I, I'm talking big game, like I'm talking finals, she's not going to book anything. We're just not going to go out, right? And if we're having dinner at home, don't laugh. This is I'm a not, no, I'm I'm laughing because someone just tweeted this. Jimmy looks drunk and he's <laughs> behind you. And I'm pretty sure he is. Jimmy is Ask drunk. Him. Jimmy, you drunk? Drinking. We've been drinking since eleven AM. You drunk, Jimmy? Ask him. I have sh- shit to say. Oh, to Jimmy has shit to say about uh, <laughs> to Dean. I have to tell him something that's very freaking important. He has something to tell you that's very important. Uh, and Bring it him probably over. supersedes anything that I need to say to you. Why don't we end the, the podcast with Jimmy then? Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, do you want some talking music? Jimmy, do you want some talking music for what you're going to say to me? Uh, no, Dean, I just have one thing to say to you. If you don't want, can you hear? Yeah, I can hear you. You just turn your microphone off. Can't hear you. There can you, know. you hear me now? I can. Yeah. I can hear you now, okay, Jimmy. Perfect. Okay, so if you don't want the world to know about your life, don't tell that man right there. And the problem I have with that is I don't even have to tell him. I have people that tell him stuff. <laughs> and and it's like listening to the conversation about you and your date. Yeah. He should not have known if you don't want the world to know wasn't a date okay you, you going out for dinner and missing with a, a game. female yeah with a female yeah. okay so going out places don't tell him if you don't want I the know. To know dude i know i've talked to him about it like he 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 uses people like he uses you he uses no, he doesn't everything. he doesn't use he no doesn't he uses use. information about you to embarrass you because he enjoys it and i know he's doing it to me and i don't care jimmy that's no, the difference between you and me. To make things awkward, not to embarrass. To make yeah, but and awkward. awkward is entertaining, Jimmy. That's what you have to understand with Lachlan. You can't, you can't pigeonhole him. You can't tell him that he can't make fun of you. You're around, and your your existence is is important to him in every capacity, and that includes when he tells people things about you you desperately don't want other people to know. That's because he doesn't have a life. He has to make fun of other people's. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Jimmy, but relax. He loves you. Every time but I no, talk to no, him, I'm, you know what I'm he says relaxed. to me, Jimmy? Do you know I, what he I, says? I just, heard, I just heard him riding you about that date, and I'm like, you don't tell him stuff. You don't tell him things. No, I'm happy I told him, as a matter of fact, because I can deal with it. I can deal with what comes back. And, Jimmy, I'm here to tell you, you need to toughen up. You need to toughen that skin. You need to be able to take what he gives you and enjoy it. Because he loves you. That's his way of saying he loves you. If, you know when he makes you it, feel I, like shit? If I didn't take it, he'd be stabbed already. <laughs> I don't mind. I'll tell him anything, anytime. Doesn't bug me at all. Because it doesn't bother me. It bothers you. And you need to Stop. fucking toughen up. Oh, wow. Well, that hurt. The one feeling that he didn't hurt, you just did. Tell him about Randy. Uh, Dean, tell him about... Ask him about Randy. Randy. Tell tell me about Randy, Jimmy. Uh, We're not talking, no. Yeah, tell me about Randy. Who's Randy? It's Brandy, but it was... It was... uh, What? Go ahead. Who's Brandy? A girl? You like her? No, no... uh, Oh, is it your girlfriend? No. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? You it's have a girlfriend. A you know, you crush. like a girl. You like a girl named Brandy. What's she like? Yeah, is she and, tall? Uh, yeah, but she's also married. And yeah, let's not go there. Um, <laughs> that's why you. That's why you don't tell him stuff, right? 
Yeah, she but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't tell him. Somebody else told him. That's why you don't <laughs> tell people to talk to Locke. Who is See, this? That's chick? why I'm helping you. Is Br- Brandy with an I? That sounds like a stripper. Is she a stripper? No, I, I just she's a bartender. At the she's bar a bartender at a strip joint. At a strip no, joint. No, no, just Does a she, bar I work at. She likes you. You like her? No, uh, I told her I liked her, and then she said I'm married, and he <laughs> may he may kill you eventually <laughs> because he uh, just got out of jail. <laughs> It's a true story. I Is love it. Yeah. <laughs> you guys go drink your beer, dude. Uh, oh, yeah. And hang in there. Try and hit on chicks that uh, aren't married to psychos that just got out of prison. I'll try. Okay, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. James P. White is a member of the locker room with Lachlan Cross, 95.7 Cruise FM. I believe we did some good work today. Thanks, everybody. We really appreciate it. Is she a dancer? Sounds like a ripper name. Yeah, Brandy, stripper. Oh, she used to be for sure. That was her stage name. She just keeps it because she's bartending. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for being part of the podcast. Uh, you can join us at DeanBlundell.com and you can sign up for a newsletter there. Get everything that we do. Thanks to our sponsors and our friends at EasyAutoFinancial.ca. Easy Auto Financial helps you get a car. doesn't matter about your credit rating. They're awesome people too. And they want to make sure that you get in a car and get financing that you need. Call our friends at Easy Auto Financial today by going to easyautofinancial.ca right now. Also, our friends at Domination, domination.com, dmntn.com. Uh, what we use them for is to produce content. Super easy. Makes your life a million times easier if you do gaming, podcasting, streaming. You want to produce content, content promos, whatever the situation is, they'll do it for you. And like one hour of content takes like seven minutes. You get 72 pieces of content that you can just filter out into the world. It's super easy. It does everything for you. Go to domination.com. Try them for free today, dmntn.com. Uh, Ed's Fine Imports and his Gitch Boxer Briefs for the busy fella. Uh, you got the pouch and the boxer briefs and, um, you can't lose luxury underwear, Canadian made from edsfineimports.com. His gitch with promo code gitch three. He's going to send you four pairs for the price of three promo code gitch three clothing for men and boys shop online today at edsfineimports.com. And our friends at blue microphones, we wouldn't be here without them. Uh, Logitech group of companies and what they do for us is what they can do for you. They make you sound and look like, you know what you're doing with uh, Logitech cameras, blue Yeti X microphones. They got the blue Yeti microphone, XLR, USB gaming, streaming. It doesn't matter. This is the kind of stuff that you need to use. So use them today and uh, partner up with our partner, the official partner of Dean Blundell.com and our podcast network now 73 strong. Go to Dean Blundell.com today to check out blue microphones, what they can do for you or go directly to them bluemike.com at blue microphones on twitter have a great day <sighs> thanks everybody for parting oh never mind i was just looking at the comments thanks to everybody for the comments thanks for joining us today we appreciate it try and be nice to everybody unless they're dicks then don't bother it's just way easier not bothering don't bother with dicks keep that in mind today have a great day bye